Cuba, Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna take you Minnesota. Is nice, and we're gonna have a shoot. Hey, hi, hello. Uh, shoot my butt. I totally forgot we were doing an episode. I set up the camera, turned on the lights, and then just poof, blanked. That's my bad. Listen. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hey. I'm gonna level with you. I was just packing for the holiday break. I'm heading to sunny St. Cloud, Minnesota, which I'm just assuming by the name is really tropical and heavenly. But I guess <sighs> we can do one more episode before I go. F man. I, you know when you have a lot of stuff to do and it just keeps building and building and building until your eyes feels like it's gonna pop sh you know, everywhere, it's, it's okay, it's not, it's not your fault. I'm just stressed out. In fact, I got an idea. Just now, it, it's, it's not a pre-planned idea, but it's where I go over some news stories from the year that we've missed. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of stuff happens. And for that reason, it's really hard to keep track of all of the stuff that happens. And so we don't always have the time to cover the aforementioned stuff that happens. So in the interest of wrapping up the year like a, a holiday gift, then we're gonna get the hell out of here and sip mimosas on the sandy shores of St. Cloud, Minnesota. I am gonna blast us through a nice regular episode, right? A real, a real missionary position news sexing. No bells, no whistles, just me, you, and words from my mouth. Then I'm gonna jet. Okay, so here is some news. Hey, dog dick. I created a device that talks to ghosts. Right, I should have known. Katie, hi, hello. Listen, I have a flight in a few hours, so. Why are you dressed like a Trader Joe's manager? Don't answer. I won't listen. Listen, Beardo, I just talked to HQ and it turns out that we haven't met our random bullshit quota or RBQ for this year. And that puts our contract in total jeopardy. HQ? Hell Queen. She's my dealer. Anyway, since it's the holidays, I figured we could do like a Christmas special or something like that. Don't we usually do like a Star Wars during this time? What about... um? Avatar, huh? An Avatar thing? People like Avatar. You can do some Navi news. Hard to disagree about Avatar. Listen, this has been a very busy year for us, so I was kind of hoping to take it easy and recharge to come strong into 2023. Well, Hell Queen doesn't pay you to take it easy. In fact, I'm going to start by making it more festive over there. I put a little surprise in your vents when you were getting your floorboards reinstalled and... What? What is this? What did you just do? Oh, oops. That was supposed to be snow. It smells like ammonia. Yeah, I see the problem now. I accidentally pressed the fear gas button. Okay. Oh, whoops. More fear gas. Damn these butterfingers. Guess I shouldn't have done all that fear gas earlier. <sighs> Unwrapping 2022. News we missed. <gasps> oh, God. Oh, terrible God. How long was I out? I missed my flight. I can't feel my feet. Great. Okay. Well, now I'm fear gassed and I still have to read the news. Okay. Well, at least the hard part is over. We, uh, we did some bullshit. We, we met our quota or whatever. So it's time for news and just for I don't know, let's call it fun. We're gonna see how many stories we can cover in a short amount of time. Are you ready? Yeah, you're ready. Okay, here is some. Ooh, Cody, it's me. In life, I was your partner, but now I wear the chain I forged in life as a goose. No. Not doing a Christmas carol. Everyone does a Christmas carol. What's a Christmas carol? I'm here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. You will be visited by three spirits. The first one, boop. Passive resistance, okay. Same plan as before. Let's start with international news. Put up a graphic, nothing holiday related. In fact, make it nothing anything related. International news. Thank you. Maybe we can cover some news before the ghost of Christmas past inevitably shows up. Presumably played by some alternate version of me. F 
fucking unbelievable. Now, one of the things we completely skipped over here at the Shoddy is that Ooh, it's me, the ghost of Christmas past. Rise and walk with me, for I am to guide you through the shadows of things that have been now forgotten and so on. Fucking unbelievable. Okay, hi, listen. I'll be there in just a second, so why don't you go on ahead? That sounds like a trick. No, man. It's not a trick. I'm really excited to go with you. I just gotta make a few phone calls and then I'll meet you outside. I'll meet you outside. Enjoy your phone calls and so on. Idiot. Wow, we haven't even begun the show. Okay, let's see. Stuff we haven't covered. Uh, oh, right. The Queen of England died. Everyone made a big thing of it, despite her being 96. She was 96. That's what old people do. They die. Maybe don't close your supermarkets over it. Or do. I don't know. I'm not British. Sorry about your elderly team mascot if you're British. Okay. That about covers the, uh, the queen section of this. Hey, you know what does seem like a big deal death-wise? That a former prime minister of Japan was shot and killed back in July. And while there's absolutely no way I'm going to fully cover this event or the victim Shinzo Abe, it is pretty buck wild how that story just soared right past us, especially when you consider the motivation of the assassin. You see, the shooter had constructed a homemade firearm like a little modern John Malkovich. It's a reference, look it up. The firearm was then tested near a Unification Church facility because the assassin, it turns out, was originally targeting high-ranking members of this church. He changed his target to Abe because he found him to be more accessible and because Shinzo Abe had spoken at unification-related events. Members of the Unification Church, also known as Moonies, tend to dump their life savings into the church. Or rather, it's a cult, right? And this was the case with the assassin's mother, who had given over $700,000 to the cult and drove her family into poverty. And sorry to all my Mooney fans, but it really seems like a cult. As in, it was created in the 50s and the founder believed he was handpicked by Jesus Christ. They've been known to scan obituaries and then ask for money from grieving families to elevate their loved one's spirits, like Selena Meyer's campaign, another reference to look up. There's probably a whole video on this that we could do, because while Shinzo Abe certainly didn't deserve to be murdered for his involvement in this organization under any circumstances, we never really talk about how many powerful political figures are tied to the Moonies, thanks to the wild amount of money they have, you know, from scamming people. Mooney events have netted such high-profile speakers as George H.W. Bush, Gerald Ford, Bill Cosby, and Mikhail Gorbachev. Also, this guy. I want to thank the Universal Peace Federation, and in particular, Dr. Hawk Jahan Moon, a tremendous person for her incredible work on behalf of peace all over the world. Is he on Pandora? Hey, an Avatar joke. This concludes me acknowledging that film ever again. Anyway, of course Trump did a Mooney event, and it's a good pivot to the fact that one former Mooney who devoted his life to deprogramming cult members has written a book specifically about the cultism of MAGA fans. And while Japan is now taking the Unification Church a bit more seriously now that this assassination happened, perhaps we need to think about other organizations that feed off of vulnerable people and what kind of breaking point those groups will inspire. Not just MAGA, but prosperity theology, televangelism, Scientology, or really any donation-based organization that is heavily tied to elaborate and scammy lore. It's hard to make fun of people putting crumpets on the queen's grave or whatever when here in the States, people are dumping their life savings into a racist wall promised by a hotel manager and his drippy henchmen. And it really feels like this assassin and his bitterness is a taste of things to come for a lot of downtrodden people people led astray by grifters. So yeah, can't really mock the UK for obsessing over their queen. Instead, let's mock them over having five different prime ministers in the last six years. Liz Truss is, of course, the most notable and recent, having lasted only 44 days in the position. She was replaced with Rishi Sunak, the fifth Tory in a row. Tories are the Conservative Party over there, I'm told by 
this blank paper. They've been in power for about 12 years, and while I'm not about to break down all the troubles across the pond in this video, from what I can tell, the woes of this party can be traced all the way back to 2016 when some plonkers, I won't say who, but some plonkers thought it was a good idea for England to leave the European Union. It was a campaign led by lies and racism that nonetheless succeeded, or rather succeeded because of the lies and racism. And after the UK carried out Brexit, it became clear there was no plan in place to ease that transition. It was a disaster. Even when taking COVID into account, by one study, Brexit significantly skull to the UK's economy. A real cock up, as they say, a, a massive wad budger. And according to one senior economist, it is the reason for the current spending cuts and tax increases happening there. On top of that, the British pound, which I hear is their money, tanked even more after Liz Truss's brilliant plan to cut taxes for corporations and the wealthy. That was her plan, no shit, to get the UK out of their slump. And uh, oopsie upon poopsie, turns out that doesn't work. Turns out that conservative nationalism and obsession with rewarding the super rich doesn't actually help the economy, and we should remind all of the silly sods supporting Brexit that their good ideas are actually bad ideas. Here's one of those silly sods, for example. So I guess what I'm wondering here is how long we're going to let conservatives make dipshit decisions that always go wrong before we finally realize that they make dipshit decisions that always go wrong. Do we have a, a timetable on that one? Holy smokes, we have to do ads already and I'm not even done with international news. Maybe if I break my own arm, I can get out of here early, actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. But if I don't break my arm, do know that there's gonna be some good international news to cover after the ads. So don't go anywhere unless I successfully break my arm. Well, hey there. You know, the New Year is coming up, and ever since I choked on that Lego, I've decided that my New Year's resolution is to swallow fewer shapes. For example, the capsule shapes that a lot of vitamins come in. That's why I'm gonna tell you about AG1 by Athletic Greens. AG1 allows you to skip the pesky vitamin pills and get your daily nutrition in one shapeless drink. Shapes are the enemy after all. Did you know that Satan has a shape? Think about it. Bazinga! <clears throat> that is good. No shapes there. It's like drinking a ghost. Just one tasty scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. It's keto and vegan and paleo and only has one gram of sugar. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash more news today. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash more news today to take control of your health and give AG1 a try today. It could even help you get into shape. Oh no. OH DEAR GOD, NO! Do I? Look at us, we're back. Tried to smash my arm, but I kept stopping at the last second and bursting into tears. You know how it is. <laughs> Work stuff, am I right? Also, someone's been knocking on my door during the break. I think that Christmas past guy can't figure out how to get into my house. I'm not gonna let him in. So, that's at least some good news. And, here's some more good news, specifically good international news. Canada banned conversion therapy, joining over a dozen other nations. Maybe that's something we should uh, look into here. Maybe it's really effed in the ear that we Yanks still haven't banned that. Do Canadians call us Yanks? Or do they have like another word for us? G gun hosers, maple slag, healthcare not havers. I'm honestly not sure what else to say here. It's important to mention this particular good news because it's an example of progress happening around the world. A ray of sunshine cutting through the cracked septic tank that is America. Gosh, I am in a mood today. Similar good news, Luiz Inacio Lula da Silva was elected in Brazil, literally beating the pants off of his opponent. 
Lula is a former metal worker and union leader who can be credited with lifting roughly 19 million people from poverty. His leftist policies got Brazil off of the UN world hunger map, and he was considered one of the most popular Brazilian presidents. He did this with the Bolsa Familia program that basically paid low-income families a monthly amount based on how many kids they had. Weird. Weird how giving poor people money solves poverty like that. It's almost like creating welfare programs elevates a country as opposed to massive tax cuts for the rich. But specific to everyone, Lula also gives a sh** about stopping deforestation, something he ran hard on this time around. You see, there's this thing, it's called the Amazon rainforest, and it's like super important for the Earth's survival. And that rainforest is in Brazil, the place where Lula was elected. So it's kind of sort of extremely good that he says he actually cares about preserving that whole rainforest dilly. Of course, he now has to like, actually do stuff about that. And as anyone who has done stuff can tell you, doing stuff is hard. Speaking of, there's still, there's still, it, there's just so much to cover. Who knew the world would have so much news? I didn't even mention everything happening in Iran. The civil unrest due to the police murder of Gina Masa Amini for not wearing a proper hijab and how it spawned even more horrendous police murder. Not sure what to say about it at least in such a short amount of time, other than maybe don't f with women and young people in general when it comes to their rights to control their own bodies. Seems like an evergreen statement that can apply to a lot of things. As of writing this episode, there's been confusion over whether Iran is going to disband the morality police that carried out the murder. Also, the government just officially executed their first protester. Wow, what, um, what did they even do to deserve that? Iran state media says a man arrested for participating in recent anti-government protests has been executed. He was accused of blocking a street in Iran and injuring a member of the security forces with a knife. You heard that correctly. Mohsen Shikari was executed, as in murdered by his government, for the charges of rioting and wounding a member of their paramilitary force. And that is messed up. Seems like this isn't really a good international news situation. But as a lot of the reports are noting, this effed up execution is also a big risk for the Iranian government because it will undoubtedly result in a bigger pushback. They are sending the message that any level of protest will get you killed, which in turn means that protesters have nothing to lose. And so while the news we are hearing is very bleak and a lot more people are going to get killed before this is over, this at least speaks to a pattern of oppressive systems being uprooted by the new generation. And I think that's pretty necessary in a society that puts so much pressure on their people. It's sort of up to those people to fight back at this point, right? And so as awful as the police response to these protests are, I do have faith that progress will ultimately win. And so remember that, that, that mood I was in? Well, I'm gonna lift that mood out of hope and junk. Okay, that's international news. Done with that. I really want to get my St. Cloud on, so let's keep moving. Next up is... Ooh, it's me, a g -g 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 ghost Yeah, that's fitting. Hi, Warmbo. Could you speed this up? I am not Warmbo, Mr. Cody. Sir, silly goat. Warmbo, I, I mean, I'm not. Who is Warmbo? I've never even heard of Warmbo. I am the ghost of Christmas presents. We love presents, don't we? With the big bows and the wrapping paper all stuffed with the flesh of Warmbo's many blood-drained husks. I'm not Warmbo! Um, yeah, hello. I am a g -g 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 ghost here to sh sh show you how badly you have treated your employee, Warmbo! So, just to recap, you're not Warmbo. You've never heard of Warmbo. And you're here to show me how badly I've treated Warmbo who you are claiming is my employee. Did I, I get all that right? Uh, well, okay, B Mr. Cody, you see, uh, I'm a g -g -g ghost and um, uh, you must come with me. Crawl into my mouth. Boop again. Not doing this. Sorry, Warmbo. Sorry, America. I am refusing the call. Unless that call is from sunny St. Cloud. Where were we? Oh yeah, it's the war on children. So here's an amazing story that's been effectively buried. This week, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is expected to add the COVID-19 vax 
to the list of required childhood vaccines. If this happens, your children will not be able to attend school without taking the COVID shot. Hey, Tuckums! Man, he's right. That story about schools having mandatory COVID shots has been buried. Probably because it isn't true. God, remember COVID and all the weird vaccine misinformation? <laughs> Those were the days. Those days being now. These days. Because, hey, news? COVID is still affecting tens of thousands and killing hundreds of people per day. Not to mention that long COVID is also affecting nearly one out of five American adults who previously had COVID. In fact, long COVID is going to haunt some people for literally the rest of their lives. Obviously, we are still studying it, and it's still really hard to pin down exactly what long COVID is. But we do know that getting COVID more than once increases your risk, as does being hospitalized for COVID. The most common symptom is fatigue, and of course, brain fog affects over 60% of people suffering from it. 50% of people experience memory issues. Between 2 to 4 million Americans are currently out of work because of long COVID. While it's hard to get an exact number, the estimated economic loss for all of this has been trillions of dollars in the United States alone. And this year, the IMF's global estimate has surpassed $12.5 trillion. Not that the economy is the biggest concern, but it helps to put things into perspective. Because to frame this as a labor shortage and use that as the pass-fail metric would be a very bad idea. But I need to point out that this news is part of a pattern of financial ruin happening lately. NFTs and crypto crashing, lots of firings on top of this long COVID, and I can't help but to feel Feel like we're at a crossroads where the government either needs to supplement the growing poverty in this country and not tie healthcare to employment, or, I don't know, abandon its people and accept ruin. And it's weird that I don't know which one they'll pick. Damn, now I'm, I'm back in that mood again. It's almost like everything about America just sort of bums me out because, quite frankly, Biden hasn't done enough to address this long COVID problem. He's done some, but one could easily throw some sh** his way for not fully addressing how to help all these people. And if I were someone like Thucker Carlsbon and made a sad little career out of attacking the evil Dems and the left, well, I would be talking about that instead of a fake story about mandatory vaccinations. But whatever, you do you, Tarl. It, you know, it's easier to pretend COVID COVID is made up or, or a weapon or, or a fake weapon or whatever you feel like on any given day. Yeah, the deep state invented weekends to turn you trans. Anyway, I'm sure we covered COVID at some point this year, but it seemed time for an update since it's hype-tastic team up with monkeypox during the summer. Who doesn't love a crossover? There's a lot to say about that disease and the GOP's 80s throwback homophobia that came as a response to it. And why is it always homophobia that comes back and not like street sharks? There's also the fact that since this disease is most common in Africa, there haven't been a lot of resources spent actually trying to understand it and the long-term effects of it. You know, because we suck and are racist. And while it seems like this has come and gone in the United States, the big monkeypox story for America was that it immediately put a strain on an already strained healthcare system. And so to recap the monkeypox story, we have this combination of homophobia and othering, not studying the disease because we, as in general American attitudes, don't think it'll affect us, and then strain on our shoddy ass healthcare system. Sweet crab dick, it's almost like we haven't learned a thing from COVID. And to top it all off, this is all part of a bigger, more perfect storm brewing. Because, I don't know if you know this, but monkeypox originates from, uh, Batman's dick? I, I read the wrong paragraph, sorry. Okay, it says here it comes from monkeys. It began from a bite or a scratch, or maybe if someone mouth kissed them. I don't know, I'm not a monkey touching expert in that I only have a bachelor's in monkey touching. But it's similar to COVID in that it's a zoonotic disease or a disease that comes from an animal and transfers to a human. And animals, as you might know, live in the wilderness. Except humans, that's us, really like bulldozing that same wilderness to make room for our many red robins and parking structures. This drives the animals closer to us, the humans. Do you see, do you see where I'm going with this? As we erase their habitat, we can absolutely expect even more zoonotic diseases, or failing that, bear attacks. Did someone say ghosts? 
Oh, right, this is still happening. Get bent, f beard! It's me, your ghost of Christmas future! I'm you from the distant dystopian world of 2023! You wouldn't f***ing believe this place! Twitter is now just a single picture of Elon Musk's fully engorged penis, and all the replies are Twitter blue users doing the laugh cry emoji and assuring Elon that they're laughing WITH his fully engorged penis, not at it! My legal guardians are boars. Laptops have been criminalized by Biden, and the oceans have been replaced with Louis C.K.'s dusty cum! Aren't you supposed to be warning me about my sinister ways or showing me my own grave or something? I don't know, man. They just said on the Slack to meet up here. There's a Slack? In the year 2023, all communication is done with Slack. It's a fate worse than death. Ugh. Speaking of which, you need to come with me so I can show you your grave. Spoilers, it's covered in Louis C.K.'s cum and not the dusty cum. Okay, I don't need any of this. There's still so much more news to cover and I can't be bogged down by every little strand of sperm that blows my way. Also, I think we have ads. Do the advertisers still like us after we've referenced cum so many times? Are you asking me? Do I look like Captain Cum to you? A Brigadier General of Jizz, yeah, sure, maybe. But I've yet to climb the chain of cum command and off the do it. Wow, we've barely covered any news so far. I just, I just realized that. Okay, well, I guess we're going to cut to some non-cum ads and then maybe, possibly, actually get a long stretch of news going. Probably not, probably not. Anyway, watch these non-cum ads. At least, I think they're not cum related. <laughs> Hi, Katie Stoll here. Have you ever been trapped in an elevator and needed to claw your way out? Perhaps your neighbor is stealing your hair while you sleep. Well then, you might want to check out Reverend Terror's 100% all natural fear gas. How do I know it's all natural? Because the folks at Reverend Terror have recruited over 1,000 fear scientists to perfect the ultimate gas recipe. There were no survivors. Watch as I enjoy a big lungful of their brand new winter mint ice horror bad smell air. Mmm, <sighs> that's some good bad smell air. Reverend Terror's fear gas comes in all sorts of smell genres. There's holiday cheer watermelon, ham death, cookie dough, and of course, Gandhi's skull. And right now, you can get 20% off your first order when you use the promo code ah! That's reverendterror.gov slash fear slash fear slash some more news slash fear slash gov dot slash ah! Fear gas. Kill your neighbor. Okay, we're back. And oh my sweet Christ, I've barely covered all the news we missed this year. My head is pounding. It's like I've been gassed or something. I just want to get through this leftover news so I can make my flight, but I keep getting blasted with horse shit about ghosts and sperm. I'm sorry, it, it's not your fault. I'm just, I'm just stressed, okay? So, so we just did a COVID update and talked about how as we get rid of forests, but hopefully not the Amazon rainforest anymore, we will see a rise in zoonotic diseases. And boy, you know what that reminds me of? This pattern of disease caused by ruining the habitats of wildlife as we increasingly destroy the planet? It reminds me of soup attacks. Oh my God! Van Gogh's sunflowers! Oh my god, no! No! Dear god, no! Why? Why? Why in the f***? I'm gonna be sick! Oh my sweet Christ in heaven! No! Please! Say it isn't so! Van Gogh's sunflowers! Somebody help us! Call the police! Oh god! Oh god! I'm throwing up! I wanna puke, but I can't! Me as well! Throwing up, I mean! Oh, what foul god has forsaken! I'm sorry, what's that? The painting was not harmed? Enclosed by glass, you say? Well. Boop. No! Okay, so I guess the paintings in museums are heavily protected. Well, sh why don't we throw stuff at art all the time then? I would visit way more museums if I could throw fried dough at a Rembrandt. Yes, it seems that people are really mad at art right now. 
Here's some mashed potatoes getting hurled at a Monet painting. Here's some black ink getting tossed on a Gustave Klimt painting. Such horrors! No need to look into why they're doing this. We can just be outraged about how they tarnished the sanctity of protective glass. And in other news, it appears that billions of crabs have gone missing. Ah, uh, that's... The planet is dying. I mean, sure, but still, throwing soup on art, that is, pushing it. Anyway, snow crabs, which represent an entire fishing industry worth hundreds of millions, but also represent, um, crabs, have vanished. That's bad for that one economy, for sure, but also probably bad for the crabs and for where the crabs lived, and maybe other things related to where those crabs lived. So, um, where did the billions of crabs go? Were they thrown at a bunch of paintings? We should probably find them. I don't like not knowing where crabs are. Anyway, if you guessed climate change was the reason for this, you are, of course, correct. Thanks to the melting of sea ice coupled with increasingly warming waters, snow crabs in the Bering Sea saw their habitat shrink considerably. Crab metabolism, macrabolism, also increases in warmer water, and so it's possible they starve to death. But also, the hotter temperatures allowed other predators access to the crabs that they don't normally get. It's all theories right now, but generally speaking, when you significantly change the temperature of an ecosystem, a lot of wacky sacks goof ha ha is going to happen. For example, months of severe drought followed by flooding. You see, when the land is heavily parched from drought, it becomes less able to absorb water, ironically making things very wet when the drought ends. It's like some kind of gag where Mother Nature puts shaving cream on your hand and then drowns your family. And so in places like China that saw long periods of dryness during the summer, this was followed up with horrendous flooding. Because climate change is all about the extremes, baby! Climate with an X! somewhere instead of a one of the letters in climate. This is what also happened in Iran when an unusually dry season was swapped with fucking monsoons causing massive flooding and death. I don't have to tell you that the disasters we saw overseas this summer that killed thousands of people were absolutely the product of climate change. According to the World Meteorological Organization, or WORMZO as I will now call them, Did someone say- No, I will never summon you! Boo! Ah! Anyway, according to WORMZO, the past eight years are on track to be the warmest years on record. You better believe we broke all sorts of records, but not like, the good ones, where you eat a lot of pies or puke out the most pies. Europe is more arid than it's been in 500 years. Also, the current and ongoing drought in the southwest U.S. is the driest period in at least 1,200 years. And in Africa, floods and droughts have accelerated between 3 to 10 times more in recent times, depending on the area. In Africa, specifically, this weather is putting 22 million people at risk of starvation. Not that we noticed it in the States, because what needs noting here is that while we absolutely saw a drought in the US, the rest of the world has been punished far more as of recent. You combine that with how climate change will affect less developed nations the worst, and there's an obvious parallel between this and stuff like COVID and other diseases. What I mean is, we're not going to care about climate change, not on a large federal scale at least, until it swims up and bites us on the ass which will be easy thanks to the flooding. I know this because according to one Yale-conducted survey of people in all 50 states, only a mother total of 43% of Americans think climate change will affect them personally. But I don't even need that survey to know that America and parts of the world will largely ignore climate change. Because another thing that was completely ignored this summer was massive protests by climate scientists. In the wake of a shocking new climate report that was released this week, warnings of dire consequences for humanity in it, more than a thousand scientists protested around the world today, including a top climate scientist at NASA. Yeah, Peter Kalamas was arrested this week for civil disobedience after chaining himself to a Chase Bank entrance in Los Angeles. That's right. A NASA scientist was arrested because it has gotten so bad that scientists are becoming radicalized. Scientists, otherwise known as nerds. And yet these protests by scientists about the climate just 
came and went like any other news story. That's how f***ed we are. Because here's some news. Remember when a climate activist lit himself on fire and died in front of the Supreme Court just this year? I don't blame you if you forgot about that because it blipped in and out of the news cycle like a freaking Hot Ones clip. It didn't stick around like that Paul Rudd Hot Ones clip. And just a few months after this, the Supreme Court would go on to rule against the EPA and limit their ability to regulate emissions after a man lit himself on fire outside of their workplace because the world is literally dying. I don't know, man, what do we even do with that? I guess. Be mad because someone threw some soup at the glass covering a dead guy's flower painting? Hey, ghost of Christmas future, you hearing this? You wanna scold me about all the drugs I do and show me my cum grave now? Uh, hey, I don't normally do this, but you wanna like, just talk? Get a beer? No thanks, let's go see my tomb. I want to see it. Show it to me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go. Okay, well, that concludes the Christmas Carol stuff then, right? I did it. I finished the bullshit. I met the quota for Hell Queen, who is apparently my boss. Can I fucking go now? Cody. Cody. Wake up, you stinky fool! What? Cody, you're awake. I fear gassed us both. It was awesome. Did you have a wild adventure while you were asleep? <sighs> I dreamt that I was a giant sloth attacking a bustling metropolis where everyone looked like Phil Hartman. So unfortunately, just the same dream I always have. Anyway, gonna go do some more fear gas and go see the new Avatar. Everyone's talking about Avatar. We should do a whole video about Avatar, don't you think? Okay, later. Wow. It was all a dream. <laughs> you know, I guess there's some kind of lesson we can all learn from this. Not about Avatar, but I tried to cut corners today, rushing through the news to cover everything. And in the end, I guess I was a bit negative to the people around me. Because if you overexpose yourself to the news like I do, you can often lose sight of what's really- Ooh, I am a ghost! Mother we already did the ghosts. We're done with the ghosts. Cody, I am the ghost of Christmas three weeks from now. I'm here to tell you about the path not taken. Cody, you mustn't end the episode yet. There's still so much news you haven't covered. Just a thought, but perhaps this would have gone way faster without the constant interruptions. Anything else I need to know about three weeks from now? No. Oh, not much. You're gonna get a rash on your ankle, but it'll go away pretty quickly. Also, the oceans will be replaced with cum, and you will never guess who's. Boop. More boops. All the boops. Wow. Okay, so I've completely lost the thread now. I guess the fear gas was real, but also my dreams have bled over into reality, or maybe the fear gas was never real. Maybe this is all a big trick, like I'm Michael Douglas in the game. Who can say? Feel like we really phoned in the Christmas Carol stuff as well. But okay, so what is the next big scary thing we didn't cover this year? Quiet quitting is sweeping the nation. Quiet quitting? What is that, an indie band? Someone dense, please explain this to me. And then there's a rising get paid to don't work movement, getting millions of hits on TikTok and Instagram, calling itself quiet quitting. The idea being keep the job, but don't work very hard at it and focus on getting fulfillment outside of work. Oh, wow, a rising new trend amongst the youngs where people, um, Enjoy life outside of work. How dreadful and dangerous. Yeah, so it turns out there's a reason we didn't cover some stories this year. Because while I could spend a moment explaining why quiet quitting isn't a thing and how we've clearly been poisoned by work culture, I don't know, I really hope you already know that. And it's very telling that people working in news and media seem the most shocked by the concept as their entire industry has been completely destroyed and forced many of them to work long and unreasonable hours. You know what we should be talking about as some kind of workplace epidemic? Loud layoffs. Let's even put it in a title that I guess we can make festive. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Massive layoffs caused by rich weirdos. 
So there are a lot of problems with corporations and rich people. No, no, it's true. I feel like we might have touched on some of those in the last few hundred episodes we've done. But in terms of news stories we sort of skipped over, 2022 has seen a surprising amount of massive firings, specifically due to obviously bad decisions being made by the very few at the top. You know the few. They can be easily spotted by their bad haircuts and replica video game firearms and jokes about what they identify as. Elon Musk, um, you know, comes to mind. I'm not gonna dive into the whole Twitter situation, mainly because we already covered some of it and will absolutely be covering it more in the future. But holy smoky moly, the Muskster has whipped out almost every single shitty boss trope, then slapped it on his leg and promised us a horse if we kept quiet. Musk fired pretty much everyone who knew how to run the site, totaling to nearly half the staff, right before the holidays. And instead of trying even a little to understand the website he bought, this gold-plated dildo has even publicly fired and mocked programmers for correcting his ignorance. He's literally all the tropes, everything from Michael Scott to Mr. Burns. And because of his very unwise and bad decisions, he's opened himself up to massive legal problems and even more money loss, all while being just the most sad and transparent poster of all time. To speak in the language Elon can understand, every tweet he makes is this meme. He'll post about how great Twitter is doing the same day the news is reporting about Tesla's plummeting stock, or all the lost ad revenue, or employees being begged to return back because no one knows how to work the back-end stuff. So, yeah, amazing stuff. Bravo. There's so much more Musk to talk about, but unfortunately, Elon isn't the only alien out there making terrible and obvious mistakes that we simply must cover. We, of course, can't forget King Alien. I want to say, you know, up front, uh, that I take full responsibility for this decision. Um, you know, I'm the founder and CEO. I'm uh, responsible for, for the health of our, our company, um, for our direction. Um, and for, for deciding you know, how we execute that, including things like this. And this was ultimately my call. Well, shucks, that was actually kind of human of him. Has Elon actually surpassed Mark Zuckerberg as the most out of touch man? This Cody thinks so. Not nearly as egregiously dipshitted as what's happening at Twitter, the company, formerly Facebook, is finally circling the drain. This has resulted in over 11,000 people losing their jobs to start, which is pretty gosh dang wild. And while Zucks is far less of a dick about it than Elon, I would argue that the hubris is all the same. And while that job loss is extremely sad, I'm certainly not upset about Facebook as an entity going down. See video, comma, pivot to. And going back to the hubris, one of the reasons that Meta just Facebook, Facebook lost so much money is because Mark bet big on the concept of the VR metaverse. Just this year, they lost 9.4 billion on it alone. That probably had something to do with it being an obviously bad idea that anyone could have predicted would fail, you know, like how we predicted it. Anyone being me, for one, is what I mean, okay? That's what I'm talking about. And so, I don't know, Mark, maybe you should pay me to tell you when you suck or something. I charge $800 an hour. And so we're seeing how a single bad idea pushed by a single rich guy can have resounding consequences. Not to mention how far the bubble of tech culture is from what everyday people actually want. Had any executive simply walked outside and asked someone if they would pay a lot of money for, like, digital VR clothing, they would say no. You know, the same way they would say no if you asked them if they would pay for an NFT or a blue check mark. But because of this oblivious miscalculation, an entire company is crashing down. I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have an industry where when one company changes their code a little bit, another company loses $10 billion. Maybe when you have these massive tech monopolies run by a single all-powerful billionaire, it's like, bad. 
this feudal tech economy is one of those things that history will see as an obvious mistake. And speaking of, Amazon also did some massive layoffs. I guess to you know follow the trend, to stay hip. There's also the non-tech story about a shoe manufacturer that had to lay off 142 workers after Adidas cut ties with Kanye West. You know because of the anti-Semitism. It just feels like a pretty terrifying pattern when hundreds to thousands of jobs are at the whim of these very unstable and very rich individuals like Kanye and Musk who are clearly making bad, emotional, and self-destructive decisions. And it's absolutely f***ing wild that the media will clutch pearls about quiet quitting at the same time workers are expected to twist in the wind like this. Seems like we need to have a big and frank conversation about unions in tech. Also. I don't know, it almost feels like, this is weird to say, but I'm really starting to think that rich people are kind of bad. Ooh, I'm a false ghost. Yeah, fine, what is it? More cum jokes? Are you Darth cum or something? Be quiet, young Padawan, for I am the ghost of Christmas long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I'm here because you have lost your way by besmirching the kindly wealthy. That's as bad as the N-word, you know. Well, I have always wanted to be a Padawan. Wait, as bad as the N-word? Okay, first of all, no. And secondly, you're a Jedi from Star Wars, but are also in favor of the ultra-rich? That doesn't really scan for me. Well, I was sold to Disney for $4 billion. Anyway, you're very hard on the poor, poor wealthy. What about Mark Cuban and all that pharmacy stuff? That is a rich person going out of their way to help dirty, non-rich people. Man, you really hate poor people. But okay, sure, that's a good thing that Cuban is doing. Or rather, it's a thing that's resulting in good things. And we have not covered it yet. Except I can't help but to be bothered about how my good friend Mark Cuban is making money off of a fundamental flaw in our healthcare system. You know, something that the government should have stepped in to regulate years ago. It reminds me of companies like Walmart and then Amazon later on who took advantage of retail deserts and in turn ensured that no small business could ever compete. They were a solution that guaranteed that the problem would never go away. And so by doing this, Cuban might be ensuring that the government won't feel the need to be involved in drug prices and possibly make the problem worse in the long run. I don't know, it's still good. And prescription drugs are not the same as retail goods. But we've just seen this pattern a lot. Markets that grow into big sloppy monsters get undercut for the good of the people, but then that new revolutionary system ultimately trashes the entire industry. The music and film industries were certainly not victims when Napster and Pirate Bay came along, and so when streaming services like Netflix showed up, it seemed like a really great solution. But over time, this model made it impossible to make money at all, and a lot of products and jobs got lost along the way. So while I'm not like, a business lord, it just feels like the solution to unchecked capitalism shouldn't be more capitalism. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening because I was trying to think of obligatory silly Star Wars universe names. That's fine. This is all fine. You want to list them for me? Guggen's cum. That's the only one I thought of. Idiot. Salacious cum is right there. Okay, folks, I sure hope we're wrapping up here. We just have one last subject to cover, so that means it's the home stretch. How bad could it be? We already hit our low point with all the climate doom saying, so by rule of structure, this will be something fun to bring the year to an end, and I'll still have time to get to the airport for a dramatic finish. Okay, let's lube up our brains and blast through this final section about you US politics! Ho ho ho! American politics! Yay! Nope! Don't you dare pull that festive shit with me! I feel like I'm gonna cry. I just want to go to St. Cloud, Minnesota. Is that too much to ask? What have I done wrong here? Okay. F shit wads. Let's do this. Could I at least get some kind of fun video to boost my mood during these troubling times?
Oh God, yes, yes, thank you. Boy, some people, right? Can you believe it? That Ted Cruz, a politician, would be attacked. Sorry, I can't even pretend to be empathetic. The man openly celebrated it when Elon Musk laid off thousands of people. A US Senator posting a cry laugh emoji as a response to Americans losing their jobs because I guess he thinks some of them are libs or whatever. And that working at a fast food place is bad or worthy of mockery. And that's just like the most recent example of him being a tremendous creep. I'm genuinely surprised people aren't hurling beer cans at him every second of his life. I'm not advocating for violence. But when powerful people are openly mocking the working class while making policies designed to fuck them over, I'm not sure how we can act shocked or outraged when they're chased from public events. But I really am not advocating for violence. Not just for um, <clears throat> legal reasons, but because it isn't good. And also, not necessary, apparently, because hey, you see those midterms? For context, historically speaking, whatever party the current president belongs to often does very poorly during the midterms. Without looking up why, my guess is that most centrists are silly little contrarians who automatically see whoever is in power as the reason for all of their problems. That isn't to say Joe Biden is good or fun or isn't filled with old man farts. But it's really telling, then, that this year's midterm barely helped the Republicans. Republicans. In the face of 42% approval rating, Joe Biden, America's plain yogurt, the GOP still somehow sh their plantation style bed. And while this is being framed as a good result for the Democrats, I would argue it's more accurately a really bad result for Republicans. Because again, Joe Biden, an undressed salad of a man with his 42% approval rating. Regardless of what you think about the guy, he's not very popular, which means the GOP, who doubled and tripled down on religious extremist bullshit like attacking LGBTQ people and banning abortion, got absolutely bodied despite Biden. Remember Blake Masters? No, you don't. Sarah Palin? Never heard of her. Carrie Lake? More like Carrie Fake. Dr. Oz? Yeah, of course he lost. Interesting pattern. How so many Trump-backed candidates ate the dirt. Also interesting that progressive candidates backed by people like Bernard Sanders did very well. Equally interesting that in every place where abortion was on the ballot, voters fought and won to protect that right. It's almost like, and just, Stick with me here. But it's almost like the religious fundamentalism being pushed by the MAGA GOP is not popular. And now all the conservatives and conservative grifters are hilariously dumbfounded as to why that is. Ben Shapiro, America's special little beard grower, attributed the loss to, quote, Republicans' lack of seriousness, saying that if Republicans get serious and drop the frivolous bull bleep, 2024 could look very different. I assume the bleep is for the word cum. Lots of cum jokes on this holiday episode. Too many, one could say. But before you think he finally became self-aware, Ben then hastily added, and this is just delightful, culture war isn't frivolous bull cum, by the way. It's key. Ah, so close, Ben. Absolutely incredible to watch someone trip on their untied shoes and then conclude the solution is longer and looser laces. After all, if Ben actually explored the real problem with his party, he would be forced to look in the mirror, shut down his entire little network, shave that new beard, and walk into the ocean. This is why probably the most honest and horrifying reaction to the midterms has to come from Nick Kanye 2024 Fuentes. But the point is, when you look at these things like uh, abortion, it's popular. People like abortion. Hate it, but it's true. And you can thank the Jewish media for that. Abortion's popular. Sodomy is popular, you know, being gay is popular, being a feminist is popular, sex out of wedlock is popular, contraceptives are, it's all popular. That's all, that's not to say it's good, that's not to say I like that, popular means the people support it, which they do. And, uh, and it sucks and it is what it is, but that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. Thing is, he's right. Rephrase. He's horrifying and racist and a Nazi and has a silly little face and bad hair. And come on, dude, you don't even like sodomy? Come on. But he is right that the GOP don't have popular ideas. They are not the silent majority. His solution to this is, of course, fucked up. Because what his little Nazi chestnut can't understand is that the popular things he's identifying as bad in America aren't, um, that. 
But what I think really hits a nerve with this video is that it's starting to seem like the GOP are subconsciously or consciously mulling over what he is saying about wanting to be a dictatorship. It's why they go after the media and voting and social media. In all those cases, they are attacking the vessel in which information and democracy travels because killing that infrastructure is the only hope they have for actually winning in the long term. I mean, holy smokes, look no further than Elon Musk's hostile takeover of Twitter that has now resulted in him unbanning countless right-wing ghouls and welcoming transphobia with open arms. Dude had to spend billions to buy social media because his ideas were unpopular and bad, shaping it into his own little 4chan where a handful of weird fans line up to tell him how smart he is. As an aside, it is very funny to see people call Musk the new Trump as if he's someone the right will all get behind. You know, considering that Trump proved to be a hollow con artist who didn't live up to any promise and is now seeing some justice maybe for his many crimes. So they're just jumping from one sinking ship to another, never stopping to reflect on their poor sailing skills. Because the MAGA stuff really seems to be over, at least for Trump. And now we're finally seeing the most sycophantic of rats turn on him. The most embarrassing of Trump fans like Scott Adams have begun to disavow their leader long after everyone else. Even Mike Hang Me Daddy Pence is admitting that Trump is perhaps not so swell. As of writing this, Trump is currently fighting the January 6th hearings and a bunch of other legal problems, and his organization was now found guilty of 17 charges of fraud. It's weird, but I don't even feel like I need to cover him that much. He announced his 2024 run to the most lukewarm of responses. Dude is old news. Yesterday's come to speak holiday for a second. And what's left of his support is all so sad and weird and desperate. It. All these once popular names devolved into sweaty right-wing nobodies, all hanging out and tweeting at each other and beefing and desperately clinging onto their bad ideas. But somewhere, deep inside, they all must know that the country is moving on from their stale-ass rhetoric. And while he's not exactly fresh, Biden is at least chugging along as best as a dude who kind of sucks can. He's appointing a historic number of judges. He's mostly kind of performatively chopping away at weed criminalization, although still has a long way to go there, specifically when it comes to migrant offenses. That can be said for a lot of what Biden has done so far. The Inflation Reduction Act cut costs for health care, but not enough. It's also going to tackle climate change, but of course there's much more to do. I'm not here to jerk off Joe Biden, as hot as that would be to some of you freaks, but there is definitely a clear contrast between Biden keeping his eyes on the prize and the GOP detonating in a fury of red-faced straw grasping. To be very clear, I'm not saying that they aren't dangerous. In fact, if there's any theme of this episode, it's pressure. People under pressure, people who lost, who are hitting tipping points, out of work, sick with long COVID, who are overwhelmed and just want to go to St. Cloud, and how those people are extremely unpredictable. And looking back at 2022, it's very possible that this past year is a prelude to some extremely sinister events resulting from this desperation, because the final lifeline of the MAGA GOP could very well be what Fuentes describes. But the only way to fight that, besides being prepared and materially improving people's lives, is to not let us get sucked down into their sad little spiral. The reason their hate is stale is because love and friendship and sodomy, well, that stuff never gets old. It's what the holidays are about sodomy at least, and that means to celebrate and focus on the things that are good, you know? The things we love. Things like, ooh, it's me, a ghost. Hey, hi, sure, welcome, this is great. Why is your face blue? What is your deal? Tell me everything. I'm the ghost of Christmas, December 17th, 2009, and I'm here to tell you how pumped I am for the movie Avatar. Oh, all right, I guess we're, doing Avatar stuff after all. Yeah, um, that movie was fine. I'm sure you've seen it like a hundred times by now. What with being in 2022? Wow, how many sequels have they made? Just one, but it looks, um, yeah, I guess it looks pretty good. Uh, now that you mention it, I am kind of excited. It's James Cameron after all, the guy can't lose. Yeah, 
Hey, you're right. James Cameron has never really had a miss. That's kind of incredible now that you mention it. Like, like a miracle even. I'm so fucking pumped for Avatar! You know, maybe it's your energy, but, but I think I'm kind of pumped for this new Avatar too. <gasps> really? Yeah, kinda. Sure. Yay! <laughs> you did it, Cody. You were here this whole time? Yeah, I was hiding under your sink, and I am so happy that you figured out the true meaning of Christmas. Wait, Avatar? I don't know, sure. I'm on so much fear gas. I ate all your sponges. Are you Wormbo? Ah. When you believe in Avatar, anything can happen! You're right. You know, 2022 hasn't been the best year, but it also wasn't the worst. We've suffered a lot of trauma, and so it's hard to imagine things getting better. So stuff like the midterms or any other slightly good progress being made just feels like we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Nobody wants to say that Trump and Trumpism are definitely on their way out because we just don't know. It's hard to say COVID is over when again, again, we just don't know. And so we expect the worst, just like we expect the new avatar colon the way of water to be bad. But maybe this time of year isn't about cynicism. It's about hoping for the best. And while we need to be realistic, there's nothing wrong with hoping for and even expecting good things to happen. So happy Avatar Days, everyone! Happy, happy Avatar Days! Days! Avatar, the way of water, now in theaters in 13 years. Now in theaters. Avatar bless us, everyone. I am also here too from the Marvel episode we did. Avatar, the way of water will be the biggest hit of the decade, but we do not care. Hey, good to see you, person. <laughs> oh, and it's you, that guy, also in that Marvel thing we did. What tickle man? You're all here for me, all of the random bullshit. I'll suck your toes. You're so right. Praise him. Praise Avatar. Praise, Praise Avatar. Avatar. And also with you. The first avatar the earthlings did seek. Pandora, the planet filled with bluish freaks. And they fought Stephen Lang in a giant mech suit. Jake Sully was saved by a magic tree root. Avatar, 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 Avatar! Zoe Saldana is a movie star. 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 There it is. Star. We have not seen as yet. Avatar 2, but, but it is James Cameron, Cameron, so it's probably good. He came down from the sky to make movies fun and became Lord and Savior for everyone. Avatar, 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 aliens, true lies, and Terminator, Avatar, And then I'll go, Star. okay, Star. got it. Honestly, very impressed that you stuck around after that. But thanks. Thank you. For doing that. So much. Be sure to like. Yeah. And subscribe to our channel. Yes. Also, we've got a 
merch store with stuff on it. To Other buy. Stuff. Yeah, you buy it. Also, we are hosts of a podcast called Even More News. And this show and is this also show is available, as, available as, a podcast as a podcast called Summer, Summer News. News. You wherever can you listen your podcasts to it and on stuff. Your ears. Uh, we got patreon.com slash yeah. summer news and other stuff. Cody's giving me voice lessons. It's working. <laughs>